We welcome in this morning Congressman Scott Perry, uh, who's been in the news a lot here of late, and uh, he joins us here on WSBA. Took time out from his snowplow this morning to jump on here with us for a few minutes. Good morning, Congressman. How are you? I'm well, Gary. Good morning. How are you? <laughs> well, it's I, we're doing well. I'm looking out my window here, and I'm seeing you know beautiful little snow and uh, yeah. Uh, too much more today, but how is it up in your area? You're up in the Dillsburg area, and well, uh, you know, yeah, you, we, you yeah we got a few more few more inches since uh, since since last night. But I remember putting the uh, checking out the outside and checking the cats, uh, you know, around midnight, and it doesn't look like much more came after that because I still see their paw prints pretty clear since uh, this morning. Since then, so. Uh, you know, I, I'm, my wife told me we were going to get much more today, but it doesn't sound like it now. So, um, yeah, yeah. So, so that's it's, what we it's got. Not, might get a little drip or so uh, later on today. Just uh, people should just be careful out there, as we mentioned all the time. Uh, you've been you're, you've been on the news a lot lately, and uh, I wanted to kind of come back with you a little bit. Yeah, you know, there was a lot mentioned last week about you have a number of people asking for you to step down and resign and sure. all this kind of stuff as a result of what happened at the Capitol and. Uh, and then th- this thing with Georgia came up last week, and I-, I wanted to give you a chance this morning to talk a little bit about that and explain from your vantage point, you know, what uh, what was going on there. So uh, take it away. Yeah, absolutely. Um, look, I-, I made a statement about it, and I know that the press, uh, they like to write whatever they like to write, but that doesn't mean I have to participate. And, uh, you know, mm-hmm. Gary, it might be a shock to you, but I never – or I rarely feel like I get a fair shake in the press. So, um, so look, the, the president, the president asked me uh, to make an introduction. Uh, he asked if uh, anybody in the room knew Jeff Clark. I, I said I did, and I made the introduction. And I, I don't know why that's uh, why what's what's so egregious about that, but um, that's that's literally what happened. You know, at this point. Unfortunately, Gary, I understand there's an there's an IG investigation or one pending. I certainly respect the IG process, you know, and I look forward them for them to publish the results. Uh, let's mm-hmm. do it, and and, uh, and 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 everybody can know everything. So that, that's kind of where I am with it, and yeah. you know, um, big things to conquer, and I don't think this is one of them. You know, it's interesting. Um, I, I think what's happened here, as a lot of us watch this is that if you were associated at all with thinking that Donald Trump somehow had been jobbed in the election or somehow hadn't gotten a fair shake, that somehow you're anti-American. Anything could be further from the truth. I mean, the idea that you could, you know, possibly in the well of the House speak in favor of the president, especially in that day where, you know, we we have people who were irresponsible and criminal in what they did at the House of Representatives and the the Congress, but in, in terms of attacking them. But, you know, the sure. point being that, that there's still room for another point of view here, and free speech might be unpopular with the prevalent uh, tenor of the country, but it still is no less protected. And I think the point is when you are standing and saying, I have questions, I'm raising those questions, okay, I see a lot of the courts have settled them, but I still have those questions. Are you not allowed to still have those questions? And bring them up in the well of the House of Representatives or in the well of the Senate, as it were, uh, even though it might not fit with the narrative that uh, the majority of the country seems to think is okay right now. Yeah, I- I'm concerned about the uh, the silencing of free speech, so to speak, as opposed to the trying to win the argument based on the points that you make, whether we win it or lose it, but. In the past, you know, we understood that everybody had differing viewpoints. We disagreed with some. We agreed with others. Uh, but we listened to the other side and said, eh, I don't believe you. Eh, I, I don't agree with you. And then, uh, you know, you, you didn't make strong enough points, what have you. And uh, and that was it. Now it's, well, we, we want to cancel you or worse. And because you're not allowed to have that, you know, that viewpoint, um, to me, and quite honestly, Gary, as you know, to many of my constituents, there are unaddressed concerns. And we want to, you know, we got to look out to the future. I mean, you know, it's, uh, it, February's going to be here, and uh, we're looking at another primary election coming up. 
And, uh, you know, we, we need to know. There are a lot of people in Pennsylvania and across the country that have what they feel are unaddressed concerns, whether it's in Pennsylvania with things that were done uh, by unelected bureaucrats and others regarding election law, whether you think there was fraud or not. Um, and if you don't believe in, in, the, um, in the fidelity of the election, if you don't trust the process, we live in a republic, Gary, as you know, where, uh, where we, we count on elections to, to solve the disputes that people have, the disagreements that people have between, you know, about who should, who should be in elected office and what policies should be enacted. That's, we solve those through elections. And if people don't have faith in the election uh, because they don't believe it's accurate or they, they, you know, because, or they don't vote because they just don't think their voices are heard, I think that that's a, that's a great concern. And, you know, with all due respect to the people that uh, that disagree with the actions, the events of the day notwithstanding, um, you know, for, for the last two decades, as you know, Gary, uh, the Democrats have, have objected to the, the election of a Republican president every time it's happened. With real right. fanfare, it's their opportunity. There's a process in place for a reason. This is a, there's a constitutional process in place for a reason. If it was unconstitutional, if it was a seditious act, if it was an insurrection uh, type act, why would that process be in place and why would it have been used in the past if it's not legitimate? I, I think that this is a dangerous place, this, this cancel culture that says, you know, you're going to be bullied and intimidated into, a, you know, into agreeing with us uh, or else. And, and I would say this, too, in this era, era of and this time of unity, it seems to me that Democrats and Republicans should all be able to agree that our systems can our system can be tightened up, and 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 why not take a look at what we think might have been the problems, and, and see if we can do better. I don't know why that's a problem. Well, you know, I, I I look around at all the various protests that are taking place. They're around the world right now. You look at Russia, for example. We have all kinds of protests in Russia. We got Russia. We got protests here. We saw the GameStop stuff on Wall Street last week. And, and we're squaring off with a lot of citizens having questions about st- institutions, whether it's Wall Street, whether it's government. And to me, I'm, I'm thinking to myself the other day, and I, I was in a good discussion with, with a friend, and, uh, and I said, you know, if, if I see protests showing up uh, in Washington, D.C., or anywhere else in the country, if I'm a person in government, I'm saying, hey, what am, what am I doing that's causing these people to show up? Or what are we doing as a government at large that's causing these people to show up? And it seems to me that whether you're Democrat or Republican or conservative or liberal, you ought to be asking those questions right now instead of saying, well, that's just the other side or whatever. It's more than that. I mean, there, we've seen this now for a while. Uh, we Even the Bernie Sanders people that showed up in mass and other people showed up in mass for various things. There's, there's a lot of questions, and, and it seems to me that, you mentioned it a moment ago, together, Democrats and Republicans need to get together and start to try to answer those questions instead of just pointing to the other side and saying, well, we're better, they're terrible, and that must be the reason, right? Yeah, the, protesting, of course, in America is a hallmark of our, our republic and, and this democratic government. Um, and so it is important, especially for elected leaders, to take stock in that why is there a protest? Look, I have protests at my office, and and there's been many occasions where I've been present. I've gone out and talked to the protesters because I want to know exactly what their viewpoint is. I'm not sure you can get it all the time completely, uh, you know, driving by or walking by. So I go out and talk to them, you know. And, and again, it shouldn't be, you know, protesting is only okay for one side or one viewpoint. Right. But it's not okay for the other viewpoint. You can't say, as, as Dr. The Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King said, a protest is the voice of the unheard uh, when, when your side is protest. And then when it's somebody else protesting or somebody you disagree with, then you say it's a sedition. We're with uh, Congressman Scott Perry from the 10th Congressional District. And, uh, Congressman, you know, we, we talk about uh, the swamp and graft and corruption, and, and people are saying, hey, we're going back to the swamp now. And, and I offer up an example here of, of things that look just at least questionable and maybe worse than that. You got Speaker Pelosi, uh, who um, you know likes to bet on stocks a little bit over the years, and uh, as we all do. Uh, and yet, there's a problem uh, back in uh, 
they're, they're, the SEC is actually, I guess, uh, reviewing uh, some of her interest in, in some stocks that she had before Christmas. Uh, and uh, she basically bet on those when they were at like $500, and now they're at 833 And Joe Biden made some uh, moves with executive orders that changed uh, some of these particular stocks after Christmas time. And uh, Speaker Pelosi made a handsome little uh, profit on that. When asked about it, she said, well, my husband did that and my associations with Congress are irrelevant. Um, I don't know if you get off that easy just saying that, do you? But I I guess in, in the day and age of, well, you know, I'm just telling you I had nothing to do with it, uh, you know, it, you guys have to be very careful when you're dealing with this kind of stuff, don't you? I mean, you can't make profit on things that you are dealing with and helping to make laws on, and obviously conflict of interest uh, quickly comes into the sentence, doesn't it? I, I agree with you completely, Gary. I think you do have to be very careful. Uh, we don't begrudge anybody the freedom to uh, to do better for themselves, to live their lives, and, to, and participate in, in all levels of the economy because they're elected. However, uh, I just I do have to caveat that the appearances um, can be striking and and can be damaging uh, to you know your ability to govern and the trust that people have in you. Um, and and you know I think that uh, I think it's tone deaf for representatives uh, at any level, uh, whether you're township supervisor or president of the United States, to to not know that a lot of people think there are two systems: two systems of justice, two systems of economic rewards and punishments. You name it across the board, where we have those who are you know connected and those that are powerful and those that don't have any power and those that are not connected and uh you you know i think it's a bad look to play into that and um you know i have felt it myself on many many occasions that there are two separate systems and and it's really a it's very i think it's it's very dangerous and i think that there's some legitimacy to those claims now i'm not going to impugn the speaker because i don't know you know i'm not an investigator i don't you know so i'm not gonna i'm not saying that but i think that it's important to be very very careful and that and and when justice does have to be meted out it's meted out fairly and i think there's a lot of people across the country that say well it's not it's 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 plain and clear to see and and we need to be as elected officials very very sensitive to that we have one standard of justice in this country for everybody doesn't matter who you are the specific stock in question here was Tesla, uh, of all things, and uh, apparently they purchased 25 call options of Tesla uh, back in December. And, of course, the purchases could have been done by Speaker Pelosi or her husband, Paul, who runs a venture capital firm. Now, the options were bought at a stake price of $500 and expiration of March 18th, 2022. All right. Uh, Pelosi paid between $500,000 and a million for the options According to uh, the news on this, the disclosure uh, on the forums, uh, she also disclosed she bought 20,000 shares of Alliance Bernstein Holdings, um, 100 calls of Apple Incorporated, 100 calls of Disney Company. Now, Tesla's share have risen from $640.34 at the time the calls were purchased to over $890 today, uh, and the call options were valued at $1.12 million as of uh, this morning. So, you know, the, the, the purchases that she made, um, you know, kind of come into play here as Tesla is out there uh, being talked about by the Congress and so forth. Um, Biden's push for electric vehicles, which came after he stepped into office, which could include lifting the cap on sales, would give buyers tax credits again and is advantageous for Tesla. The president also suggested a possible cash for Clarkers program that could incentivize customers for trading in used vehicles towards the purchase of an electric vehicle. And so Speaker Pelosi could have a conflict as she works to pass clean energy initiatives from which her family could ultimately profit. So, again, whether or not you're doing it specifically for that reason, again, the appearance of a conflict of interest becomes the problem here. Uh, Speaking of uh, President Biden, lots of executive orders, lots of executive orders coming out there so far. And a lot of people are saying, hey, this is like ping pong politics now. You know, President Trump comes in and passes executive orders now. Biden comes in and passes executive orders and says, hey, you know, we're going to wipe those out. Who's going to say the next time a president comes in, maybe on another side, wipes these out? Uh, Is Congress getting bypassed on all this? 
I think that uh, I think Congress is completely getting bypassed, and, and I think, and I think I just pick on one in particular. And look, I, I understand executive orders, I understand the need for them, but I also understand that uh, people's sentiments about them on both sides of the aisle. You can't love them when it's your person, and then hate them when it's that, that's not nope. hate them when it's the the other person. That's not very consistent. So, um, uh, but but Congress is being bypassed, and I think it's an indication of of how divided we are um you know but even at this what i what i marvel is at even when you know uh, the democrat party now controls the presidency and, and the legislature to me there's essentially not much of a reason for executive orders or not, not as great a reason right i'm not saying there's not but there's mm-hmm. not a greater reason is if you can pass legislation through both chambers and I understand, you know, there's going to be a little. It's going to be a little tougher in the Senate, but I don't know. I, I just think that um, it erodes again the confidence that people have in, in the government, the larger sense of things. When uh, what's the point of Congress? Like, wh- why do we even need you folks if we just have a ruler at the top? And I say ruler not to be disparaging, but when you're when you're governing by executive yeah. fiat, it's essentially that's what it is that just makes the decisions. And I think of like the Keystone Pipeline, you know, that's that's one of those things that right. has become hyper political. Um, you know, the people made the investment, you know, coming into four years ago. Uh, President Trump eventually approved that, not on the first day, of course, it took a little time, but eventually approved that. So the investment went forward. And now all of a sudden, four years later, and when I when I talk about investment, it's not a little money, it's a lot of money. Uh, now we're back to being shut down. Do they just try and sit it out and wait? At, do those people look at their investment for yeah, the next four it, years? And you know, and I, I don't think it's. Good and then you look at our country. And, yeah, you look at Canada where they said they got a they got a gut punch over this because uh, you know you're, yeah. you're establishing something there. So to be continued. Uh, thank you for taking the yeah. time to be with us this morning, Congressman. Really appreciate it, and we look forward to our next time with you very soon. Excellent, Gary. Uh, sure appreciate you. God bless you. Stay safe out there. Thank you. Take care, and uh, don't get too tired there doing that uh, uh, snowblowing today, okay? Uh, Congressman <laughs> I, I Scott Perry. Get-